Hello, welcome back to part two of ANSYS Gateway powered by AWS, getting started for ANSYS mechanical users. In the previous video, I showed how to create a virtual desktop. Um, in this video, I'll show how to create an RSM cluster so you can launch remote jobs uh, to solve on the cluster from that desktop. In ANSYS Gateway, there are two packages for creating RSM cluster. You can choose either one. The only difference is uh, this Cluster app with EFA has a AWS Elastic Fabric Adapter, which is a high-speed interconnect, useful when you want to get the full speed out of uh, multiple nodes, so a cluster with more than one node uh, solving a single job. If you're running just on a single node cluster or you're running design points where there's not a lot of communication between the nodes, you don't need an EFA. So in the previous video, we created this virtual desktop. Now we're going to create this cluster. Uh, so even though there are multiple nodes, there could be only one, um, but there could be, typically there's more than one in a cluster, uh, but I'll create it all at once and we can interact with it um, as a single unit. Uh, so the components of the cluster, there's a head node that runs a job scheduler, um, in this case also the file storage, and then there are any number of execution nodes that uh, solve. Um, the head node is also an execution node, so in this picture there would be one head node and four total execution nodes. Another option uh, to configure this is to have the file storage on a separate file server. Um, the advantage of this is it could be a, like a shared file storage that multiple users share. Uh, you could also, you typically you have it running on a very uh, low cost VM and it can run 24 seven, you can access it anytime. Uh, whereas the cluster is going to be using um, more expensive heavy nodes and you wanna shut that down whenever you're not using it. So first a bit about the documentation. Um, in the documentation, uh, the steps that I'm going to follow are in the uh, recommended configurations by application guide. Um, and uh, this is under the mechanical, and this mechanical configurations. There's these steps I'm gonna follow. Um, I'm going to skip this optional first step. I'm gonna use the more simple configuration um, of having the file storage on the cluster. We're going to go through the steps of creating the cluster, connecting to the cluster from the VM, then I'm going to set up a mechanical solution, run it, and get the results. In the previous video, we created this VM. Now I'm going to create a cluster by going to new resource, HPC cluster. I'll give it an appropriate name, choose the right avail availability zone, enter RSM in the search bar to help me find the right packages. As I said earlier, there are two options with and without EFA. I'll choose the EFA option. Enter their license details. Also be careful to enter it in two places. They're both necessary. Um, I'm actually ready to go. I can, I can continue from here. Um, if I were to use the remote file storage, I could change this to NFS and enter the, the location of that storage. Uh, but if you're using local storage on the cluster, you can use the default options. Go to next. And next, you need to choose my hardware. Typically with a cluster, you're going to choose the largest option. Um, do not choose metal. Just choose the, the largest option. That's the same as the metal configuration. Uh, the only reason you would choose a large or smaller one is if you're running small jobs but still want to send them on a cluster. Um, but you're going to get the best performance, most consistent performance, um, by just choosing the, the largest configuration. I'm going to choose two nodes, the two node cluster. Enter the necessary information. Confirm my settings are correct and create the cluster. So the cluster is being created. I need to wait for this to, um, to get ready. Okay, uh, the cluster has is set up and running. Um, one thing to verify first is that just because it says running here doesn't mean it's fully ready. You can check on the node details and just make sure that every node is running and also in the, the ready state. Um, then it's, uh, it's ready to use. Also note that uh, the previous step of creating the cluster could be done from any browser. But uh, this step of connecting must be done from my Ansys Gateway VM. So I am now 
running on my gateway VM um, in my browser from here and ready to connect. So at this point, I just push the connect button from the RSM cluster, which downloads this exe. Just run the exe. It will run through some setup scripts. At which point the cluster should be ready to use. We can verify that before running a real job by going into the Ansys installation, the start menu folder, and going to RSM configuration. We should see that this, uh, my cluster is here. Um, it should be already be configured. I can go to queues and submit a test job. Okay, that test job took about a minute to run um, and it's successful. Um, if it failed, you can click on this report and perhaps get some information as to uh, why the job failed. But in this case, it was a success. And so we're ready to solve. Um, again, this check is uh, optional. If things are working, you don't need to test it. it just goes directly into mechanical uh, to solve, which we'll show next. I've opened my data in mechanical. It's all ready to solve. All I need to do is make sure I've selected the right queue and set my number of cores here. If your queue is not correct by default, change it here. If for any reason you need, um, it wasn't added or you need to modify it, you can go to the here to the solve process settings and add and modify the queue. But it should be automatically configured and selected. Now, based on the uh, hardware I chose, I have a maximum of 128 cores on my cluster that I can solve. Usually you're going to want to use all of those. Um, in this case, I'm going to run with only 32 cores. Just hit the solve button and the job will be, the input file will be created locally and it will be sent to uh, the cluster to solve. So while that's solving, I'm going to open up some RSM tools. One is RSM cluster monitoring, RSM configuration we used already, and RSM job monitoring. So I'm just going to open up both the cluster monitoring and the job monitoring. I can see in the job monitor, I can find a, a previous job that was run, as well as my current job that I'm running, and I can um, get some information about the status here. The cluster monitoring tool, I can verify that I'm looking at the right configuration, click refresh, and I can see the current status of that cluster. So here I can see that the job just finished, um, but when the job was running, I have a hundred total of 128 cores on this node. 96 were free, 32 are being used. And I can look down here and see here's my two nodes, 64 cores each, 32 cores were being used on the first node, zero cores on the second node. So someone, myself or someone else could use this cluster to run another job simultaneously, or I could have run a larger job here. All right, with the job finished, you can see that I have these green down arrows in my solution. Just need to right click and get results and they'll be automatically downloaded and added into uh, Mechanical, into my Workbench project, same as if I had solved locally. And here are my results. Note that in order to download results like this, um, the file server must be running. So if the, right, currently my file server is configured um, on the cluster, so my entire cluster must be running in order for me to get my data. Um, that's one reason you might want to use an NFS file server. That way, for example, you can run your job overnight and set the cluster to automatically shut down once the job is finished, uh, minimizing your costs. And then next day, you can just download the results um, from the NFS file server. However, were you to do that, you wouldn't be able to do the right click and get results. You would have to manually connect to that server and then go to um, read results files here and to import them into your project. OK, 
Okay, I'm now going to show you another way of using RSM, and that is design points. So here's my project in Workbench. I have uh, parameterized the design. In this case, I've just uh, parameterized the, the force load. Um, I can change the force. I've created these eight design points here with different forces applied. So these are eight independent simulations using basically the same model with just the difference in the loading conditions. I want to run these in parallel in RSM. I have 128 cores to use, uh, one terabyte of RAM. I can run more than one job at a time as long as I have the licenses for it. So how do we configure this? In the project settings, I can right click on the parameter set and do properties, which opens the properties window. And then I can um, do the settings here. So I want to use remote solve manager. I want to choose the RSM queue. Uh, now down at the bottom here, number of jobs, I'll just set one job. But the number of tasks per job, this task here means number of design points. So how many design points do I want to solve at once? I have eight. I could do all eight. I could set the number higher in case I have more design points later. I'll just say, let's say 10. Now there's one more setting here, the component execution mode. This is how each individual design point is going to be run. If I choose serial, that means so each design point is only going to solve on one core. That would be too slow. I have 128 cores, only eight design points. So I'm going to choose parallel, and then I can choose a number of cores for each design point. Uh, I'm just going to choose 10 to make the numbers, uh, the math easy to work out. Eight design points, I should be using 80 cores. All right, I'm all set. And all I need to do is click update all design points. The project needs to save first. And then these eight input files will be generated. Um, the mechanical window does need to close um, when working with design points. Um, so it's going to create the, the eight input files and send those um, to the RSM to solve in parallel. So it's submitting the RSM job. I can monitor that through the RSM job monitor or Likewise, I can click the job monitoring here, which gives me essentially the, uh, the same information. So here's my new job. It's a single job, which runs these eight design points. I can also go to cluster monitoring, refresh the state of the cluster. So what's happening here? I've got 128 cores total, 47 are free. Looks like um, 81 cores are being used. So I predicted that I would be using 80 cores, eight design points, 10 cores per design point. One core is used uh, on the cluster to, um, you know, to manage that. So there's always going to be one core reserved um, for managing these design points. Um, so use keep that in mind when deciding how many um, cores and design points to solve with. Okay, once the design points are all finished and automatically downloaded, um, the job is indicates finished. If I refresh my cluster status, it should show all the cores are free. I look at my parameter sets and I have all of the um, output parameter results here. So that's using uh, RSM with Workbench and Design Points. Design Points could be created manually or you could use um, software such as Design Explorer and OptiSlang. A little bit about where you can get more information. Um, of course, the documentation for ANSYS Gateway powered by AWS. We've been using that guide. Mechanical APDL will have um, in-depth information about performance and um, parallel hardware, uh, mechanical application, a little bit about the interface um, using RSM within the interface. Uh, for RSM itself, we have the RSM manual, Remote Solve Manager. And for using design points in RSM and Workbench, that's covered under the Workbench manual. There's working with parameters and design points and working with ANSYS Remote Self Manager. So I hope this was useful. Again, all these steps are detailed in um, the Gateway documentation. 
At this point, uh, the cluster is done. I can stop it to save uh, save expenses. I could also configure timers so it can automatically shut down when there's no applications or CPU usage. <laughs>